Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to implement Network Load Balancer. As we know that we have Application Load Balancer and Network Load Balancer. Application Load Balancer is working with the layer 7 and Network Load Balancer is working with the layer 4. Because Network Load Balancer is working with the layer 4, it is having ultra low latency and it can handle traffic from millions of users. If you have a simple web server and if you want to set up a load balancer, application load balancer would be your preferred choice. But if you have gaming servers and millions of gamers are accessing these servers, then in this case, network load balancer would be your preferred choice. Now we have all this requirement to set up the network load balancer. And the first thing is you must have proper setup of VPC. During the video number 59 to 64, I already explained you how we can create a public subnet and private subnet. Okay. And this is like our normal VPC design. Okay. So I have the exact same VPC design in my console. So if you go to the AWS console, here it is a VPC. I have my own VPC. I'm not using default VPC. Here it is a subnet. I have public subnet, private subnet, internet gateway. We have net gateway. So my old VPC design is already completed. Now we are going to set up network load balancer. In order to set up the network load balancer, we have to create two EC2 instances, which acts like a web service. We have to set up the security group as well. I have created both security group. The one security group is NLBSD. In this NLBSD, I'm going to allow all traffic. I'm going to allow TCP traffic 80 from anywhere because internet user is going to request using the NLB URL and this particular load balancer is protected using this security group known as NLBSD. Now, internet user is going to request to that particular NLB, so I'm allowing traffic from anywhere. If you look at this here, I am in my uh, VPC VPC console, and if you go to the security group, I have this NLB SG. In the NLB SG, if you verify the inbound route, I'm actually allowing HTTP traffic from anywhere. Okay. Same way, I have web server SG as well, which is used to protect my web servers. And here in the inbound rule, okay, I have HTTP allowed, but it is only allowed from network load balancer group, means NLB SG. Now, this is extremely useful. Why? Because we don't want anybody to send requests to our web server directly. Okay, the request must come through the NLB. So that's why. Here, when we created this uh, web SD, we just allowed port number 80, but only from NLB SD, okay, which is one of the best practices. So, what I can say that my all the prerequisite sites is completed. We are going to set up two web servers. We have to create this web servers individually. I cannot create this together because we want to set up two different web servers over here into the two different availability zones. Right, we are going to create web server one into the AP South one A means into the private subnetwork A, and another EC2 instance into the AP South one B means private subnet two B. So let's go to the EC2 dashboard. Here I am going to click on launch instance. Okay, giving name web server A one. Okay, we are going to use Amazon Linux T2 Micro. If you look at the key pair, I'm going to use this key pair because I have in my computer. You can create the new key pair if you want. This is VPC setup. I'm going to edit this. Here, I'm going to select private subnet 1A. Look at this diagram. You can download this diagram. It is below the video. The link is below the video, right? So here it is in a private subnet 1A. So here I'm going to select private subnet 1A. As we have our EC2 instance into the private subnet, so 
we are not going to provide public IP. We already having our security group. So I'm going to select security group. And this is my web SD security group. Now, as we have our EC2 instance into the private subnet, we want to configure it as a web server. So we are going to use a user data script. I have this user data script ready. In this, we are going to set up HTTP server and here we are just going to write that welcome to the web server one. Okay. I will provide you this user data script below the video. You can directly copy and paste. So done. Right. So it will configure HTTPD service on my web server. Now we have to create another EC2 instance as well. So let's create the first one launch. Now I want to create the second one as well. It is a web server one. So going to load another instance and here I'm going to say web server 2 Amazon Linux key pair. I have this my Linux going to edit this time private subnet 2B. Look at the diagram. Yes, private subnet 2B. Okay. And we have our server web server SD. So web SD here I'm going to copy the user data script again. So let's copy this. Okay. And here I'm pasting this. Now here, welcome to web server 2. Right. So let's make sure that we have our EC2 instance into the right subnet. Yes, private subnet 2B. Okay, web SD. Everything looks good. And lowest the instance. Now we have our instances. And if I'm going to the instances i will get it over here and aws will take some time to create this during this we can set up our load balancer okay so i'm going to the load balancer here it is blank i don't have any load balancer so i'm going to click on create load balancer in the previous video we already discussed about how we can create application load balancer here we are going to create network load balancer now here we are getting our create load balancer console. Now, if you look at the way we are creating application load balancer or network load balancer, it looks like a same. Here I'm giving name uh, NLB. Same way you want to create internet facing or internal. Internet facing means you will have public IP for your load balancer. User can access this over the internet. If you talk about internal, your load balancer will be accessible from the internal VPC only. Here we are setting up this internet facing. If you look at the picture, we are setting up this uh, internet facing load balancer. Okay. Here we have to select IPv4 or a dual stack IPv4. The next version of the IPv4 is IP version 6. IPv4 supported Dual stack means IPv4 and V6 together. Dual stack is also supported, but pure IPv6 is not supported. Okay, right now we are going to set up IPv4 load balancer. So I'm selecting IPv4. Here it is about our VPC design, selecting my VPC. And here we have to select our availability zone. If you look at this in the uh, diagram, we are actually mapping this with the two public subnets over here and we have two public subnets into the two different availability zone which is providing high availability and because it is compulsory to select two availability zone over here we already having this kind of the design that we have two public subnets into the two different availability zone okay so here i am going to select first Availability zone uh, for subnet into the AP South 1A, which is public subnet 1A. And here I'm going to select public subnet 2B. Now, this is a difference that you are going to get over here. Here, because we have network load balancer and in the network load balancer, we have facility to set up. Hi, I'm Bhavi Shatara from Cloud Fox Hub. To watch full video, please visit our website learn.bhaveshatara.live or CloudFox Hub Android and iOS app. We are going to upload full video daily on our portal. You can visit our portal and you can enroll 
to our 100 days challenge course right now for first 1000 students for india it is just 499 rupees fees and for abroad you just need to pay only 7 usd we are going to upload daily full videos over there and this challenge will be continue for 240 days thank you very much see you inside the app goodbye